G'day everybody, and welcome back for some more Kerbal Space Program. Last time I was messing around with an idea I had to land on Minmus with a rover, which was delivered by a rocket, which was going to land belly down. And I like this stupid idea, so I'm going to keep running with it today. I think we ended last week with me testing this on the runway here at the KSC and I did manage to get the rover clear even with the heavier gravity and all of the fuel on board so I feel pretty confident that this will work on Minmus with the rover dropping out. Now one of the challenges I'm going to have with the next phase of this design is trying to compensate for the fact that these things are not going to be applying equal aerodynamic forces on both sides of the rocket and I might want to give this escape stage some more fuel but I'm not sure about that part. I think the return stage may well have enough as is to get back from Minmus because Minmus is pretty easy to launch from, well incredibly easy to launch from and I just need to then make efficient maneuvers to get back into the atmosphere. One thing I did notice that I hadn't done last time is I've got no science storage on the rover. And I think if I'm going to particularly drive this thing to other biomes on Minmus, I'm going to need to have some sort of science storage on here. Because so I'm not sure, I don't think you can store stuff in the external command seats. So I need to figure out where I can stick a little storage thing on there. Also, <laughs> Uh, thanks so much, Chipsticks, for the prime sub. Uh, and thank you, Dread Pirate, sorry, Dead Pirate Mouth, for, for the su for six months, uh, a couple of hours before the stream. Thanks, Faded Warrior, thank you for four months. Um, no, this is not an SSTO. This was... Can anybody remember? There was a purpose I had for this. Um, it was to get more science to unlock something in particular, and I think... It might have been the big rocket parts for the planes. I think I wanted to unlock experimental aerodynamics, which gives us the rocket fuel fuselage for the large plane parts. And then I was going to try and make a heavy lift SSTO, so something with the big bits, which I'm not even sure if I can, because the aerodynamically they're not so great. Um, but yeah, that was... That was the idea, was to unlock these big bits and then mess around with an SSTO that maybe could actually deliver something of substance to low carbon orbit. At least if it was a, a satellite or a little bit of fuel to deliver to a station, that sort of thing I thought could be quite fun as a challenge to do. So... <laughs> that's that's the goal there. Now, can I find a an experiment storage unit that would work on this little rover? That's probably the size of one I want to use. And because of all the challenges I was having last week with... Um, let's just say trying to get this rover on board. I'm going to try and do this while it's in here. I'm not sure where to stick it. If I move the... Maybe if I move the goo unit, I could put it in between these seats. Or I could get rid of a seat and just take one Kerbal out with me. But I'd prefer to take two. Maybe... Oh. Let's move this round to the side. Then, hopefully it fits in the middle. This one... Oh. I'm clutching at <laughs> straws trying to get this thing to... Which way is up? Well, it's that way now. 
That'll work. <laughs> Thanks, Snoop Tastic. Thanks for the bits. <sighs> um, yeah, oh yeah, I need to... Once, So I'm going to take this over to the VAB now. We'll save this. Let's go take it to the VAB and start building the rocket that's actually going to take this to Minmus. Or just slap it on top of the giant rocket that I built before. <laughs> Which could be done. Um... Could be done. Uh, where is... Oh, I need to move... I might just check that this has got all the stuff in it that it's supposed to have. Because I had a whole bunch of... Yep, that's got the stuff in. And... No, not the Clampotron. Why are you doing this to me? Why? And so that's got the ox stats and one of the seismometer thingies. That's got the transmission units. Yep, that's all good. Uh, this command pod does not have anything in it though, so... Oh, that's the other thing. Do you guys reckon I'm better off having this port on the top of the rocket? Like as in, when we're landed on Minmus, do I want this downward facing or upward facing? I'm thinking maybe upward, because that'll be easier for me to just gently land with my jet... with the Kerbal's jetpacks on. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Alright, let's flip that. And we're going to get a bit more cargo in here. So, let's grab an EVA repair kit. Yeah, experiments kits... Don't know that I'm going to need the repair kits, but I'm like, eh, why not? Um, hmm. EVA fuel cylinders, no. Got the experiment control. I don't think there's anything else I need, is there? I suppose I could take a light. <laughs> Let's put a work lamp in. Why not? Uh, since I'm going to Minmus, I'm not worried about ladders. As long as I can jetpack up, it's all fine. All be fine. So let's close this. Now I was reading something interesting the other day uh, about the way that landing legs work. At least at some point during KSP's history, stuff like landing legs and ladders, they made it so, and I don't know if it's still that way, but it seems like it possibly is, landing legs, ladders, don't have drag and such themselves, but what they do is they add, they increase the amount of drag of the parent part. Black Shadow! <laughs> Thank you very much for gifting five tier subs. Uh, thank you very much. You are too kind. Especially after putting up with me in Minecraft. Uh, cool. So, now, let's potentially do things this way. Which is, is that this, is it the way too big? It's the way too big, isn't it? Is that the, hmm, let me check. Let's get rid of that. Uh, or was it the giant asparagus? Oh, here we go. Here's the giant asparagus. There's the, there's the money. <laughs> Uh, let's go up high enough so that this actually can fit. <laughs> I 
I don't have enough money. I can't actually afford this launch. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for six months, Silent Phoenix. <laughs> I might actually have to do... Oh. Uh... Hmm. It might be time for me to do a couple of missions that actually earn money. I've been doing pure science missions uh, possibly a bit much. Uh, let's just save that. And let's have a quick look at what missions I might have that could actually make me some money. Because <laughs> I kind of forgot about the whole career mode needing money thing. I was just going full science mode for a bit there. Uh... Moon, moon, satellite specific orbit of Kerbin. That could make me a bit of cash quickly. Duna, Duna, surface output, moon, moon, Ike, Ike, Min, ah, oh, Minmus. Gather surface deployed seismic sense science. It's a lot of S's. That's some good money. Let's do that because I've got the parts on board anyway. There we go. Now I've got enough money for the... Should I do the stupid asparagus that's going to have probably too much fuel to easily land this thing because I'll want to try and land it vertically. Uh, maybe we won't. Maybe we'll go... Nope. Maybe we'll just go this one. It's a bit more affordable. Yeah, it's about half the cost. <laughs> Get rid of one of those decouplers. And just check our staging. So we got those five that go off first. That pops off, that ignites, those pop off, those ignite. Those go first. These engines. Okay, those need to be further up. Hey, Dex. Um, yeah. <laughs> Let's see. I, th I think this... I'll check out my delta V and thrust to weight ratio in a sec. Uh, that needs to go later. All right, uh, those go then. That pops, then I rotate, then these have to ignite. And then I try and land. And then once landed, I shoot off with these. That goes separate. All right, I think this is going. So. The rest of the way ratio is set for sea level on Kerbin, that's fine. So we got 1.17 for the first stage. 1.9 for the second stage, that's fine. Yep. We will be able to get this thing to orbit. With probably an unnecessarily amount unnecessary amount of fuel. Uh no, Shadow, I didn't stop the server yesterday. I forgot. So hopefully nothing's happened. Okay, I think this is good. I think we're good. I think we're good. <laughs> Thanks, Shadow. Um, yeah. Let's just... I mean, oh, all oh, right. That's yeah. That's going to be kicked because of where the thing is. I don't think there's much I can do at this scale. I think I'm just going to be like, yep, let's do it. All right, uh, Minmus Rover mission. Let's put some crew in. We got a Jeb. No Jeb. We got a Val. Val, Bill, and Bob. So tempted to put Bill and Bob in the external command seats of the rover, rather than putting them in the capsule to begin with. 
since that's where they need to be. Alright, crossfeed should be disabled across these by default. Yeah. So, because it's a separator, uh, crossfeed's disabled by default. So that's fine. There's no fuel on the rover. It's all battery powered, so that's not a problem. Cool. Alright. We need a prediction. Let's start a prediction. Uh, will I go belly up or belly down? So, mission objectives. Oh, let's leave it at two minutes. Mission objectives are land on Minmus, get the rover deployed, drive the rover, don't really... Not really going to define how far. Uh, and then return to Kerbin with science. Hopefully, get this whole thing up into orbit. Get this whole section with most of its fuel in orbit of Minmus. And then land using these four thud engines. Going nicely, softly belly down. And then deploy the rover... Drive the rover around, get some science, and then transfer the science back into the command module. Lift the whole thing, assuming I've still got some fuel left, lift the whole thing belly up, angle myself, and then launch with this command module back to Kerbin. Uh, yeah, Tex probably would be possible to land vertical and then use robotic parts to deploy yourself to horizontal, I would imagine. I was half tempted to go that way. Um, but I think, um, I think this way is a bit, <laughs> a bit sillier and I've, I've always wanted to try and land this way. I also think it might be a useful way of landing for uh, getting station parts deployed. Although similarly, because I could put robotics parts. Alrighty. T minus 10, 9, counting off the prediction. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. One and blast off. Do I have a control point that's pointed in that direction? No, I don't, Tex. No. Oh, I mean, I could. I suppose I could use the rover as a control point that's oriented in that that way. So that that could probably be worked. That could probably be used as a method. Getting sensible control. There, Tinks. I feel like that's really quiet this week. That's more like it. Yeah, Bill's happy. He's dancing. Looks like Val got the middle seat. Well, all is good up to 10 kilometers, so that's something. Start tilting once I switch stages. I knew I should have, um... I know I should have done a gravity turn by this point, but... Uh, with questionable aerodynamics uh, comes <laughs> minimal confidence in my ability to safely do a gravity turn. <laughs>
Let's get up. Overnode, apoapsis. 55 60 Just the barrier stage is gone <laughs> Do a barrel roll No! <laughs> no And we're at Cut engines and try and set up a maneuver mode. Maneuver mode? Maneuver node. Uh, like 85, I think. There we go. Alright. Burn time, five minutes. Uh-oh. What's that tilting so much? It is wobbling a lot. This can't be right. This can't be right. It's saying it needs this much burn time. Uh oh. Nope. Overcorrecting. Oh man. Okay. Maybe this is going to struggle. Uh, we might have a problem here. Thanks, Zero! Thank you for 13 months of Prime. I'm doing good. Assuming this mission doesn't end catastrophically. Hey, Mountie. Um, hmm. Okay. Maybe I did need the giant booster section that was super expensive. Because look at how slowly my periapsis is going up. 395, 394, 393, 392. It's very, very slow. The underpowered skiff is my problem. Doesn't quite have the required oomph. Also, slight problem. Uh, I didn't put solar panels on my final stage. Yeah, I might not even make Kerbal Orbit here. <laughs> uh, Kerbin Orbit, I should say. The good part is we do have this final stage as an escape stage. Tell the rover to get out and push. Yeah. Do these have an alternator? I don't think they do. I'm going to have to be careful about that. Perhaps it's at 298. I forgot the solar panels. Yes, I did. That is exactly what happened. I forgot to put solar panels on here. And apparently I forgot that this booster section that I just pasted in uh, is... Not so powerful when it gets to this stage. Because it's only got a skiff. It really should have a mainsail there. I'm 
I'm gonna give it a red hot go, but I don't think this is gonna work. Yes. No solar panels? That's a paddling. Yeah, whoops. There's periapsis. Periapsis is a two t minus two ten. Have I learned how to parachute yet? No. No, I haven't. But I do have an escape capsule on this thing, so I should be able to get the three of them down safely. I'm still hoping I can... just... just get away with this. Periapsis is now at minus 140. The rover does have solar panels, yes. So I've just got to depower everything on the lander section uh, to or in order to um, not use its power while I go off and do stuff with the rover. Yeah, hitting atmosphere is going to be awkward, but periapsis is now at minus 85. If I can just... If I can get away with just scraping the top of the atmosphere, it might be okay. That's a very good point, Burns. It is a very good thing I didn't put Bill and Bob in the rover seats. <laughs> that would have been real bad. Alright, Periaps is at minus 45. We are inside the atmosphere right now. Periaps is at minus 30. Minus 20. All right, periapsis is at zero. Periapsis at 20. I need to get periapsis up to the upper atmosphere. Or I'm in trouble. Forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-four, forty-five, fifty. 41, 42, 44, 45, 50. Just trying to shoot straight up now. 55 is as low as I should go now. 56. 57. Should start going up. Alright, up we go. Alright. Uh, I need to turn prograde. Come on. Turn, baby, turn. Now, do I have enough fuel after that stupidity to get to Minmus? That is an important question. All right, let's check out the map. Uh, we will do a burn at Apo and lift the periapsis up a bit. But we made it to orbit. I think it's very unlikely that I've missed orbit now. We should be good. Yeah, a thousand meters of Delta V might be enough for me to get to Minmus and back. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what the minimum Delta V is for Minmus transfer, but it uh, it might be further than this.
Be. Yeah, I've got reaction wheels. Well, I've got one in the command module. I didn't add any extras. Alrighty. We are now in space again. So let's go around here. Yep, I am landing heart this thing belly down. Hopefully. Oh. <laughs> Come on. Turn. Faster. So I can actually <laughs> do this burn in time. I didn't give myself enough time for this. I'll do. Periapsis is at 113, apoapsis is at 119. Now, how, if at all, can I get charge from the rover? Not sure that the solar panels are going to be able to work. So if we can't get charge, I probably don't want to continue this mission because I am currently dropping charge quite rapidly. Let's try... So, ah! See what happens. Okay, okay. We can get away with parts clipping. There we go. We're in sun. Are we getting charged though? I don't know. Yep, charge is going up. Yes! Yeah, Lord Lunda, I did forget the solar panels again. I'm going to blame it this time on the fact that I started building this one week and then finished building it the next, so I forgot which steps I'd done. <laughs> so it was worse than usual. Okay, we have full charge again, which is good. So I can do that before... Um, why is that there? Why won't you go away? I don't know why this isn't going away. I don't want you. Uh, oh, that's gone. Good. All right. So with power, let's have a look. Uh, Minmus.
See how much Delta B I'm going to need to get out there. Ah, uh, probably. Dang it. Maybe what I'll do. So let's see what I can do with the moon first. I can get it to kick me into a higher orbit for cheap. Like that. Oh. Got to reduce the thing. Sticky notes. Don't you mean time for a whiteboard, Shadow? <laughs> okay, that's a suboptimal way for this to work. Also, I don't think I'm going to be able to get an accurate enough burn with the fact that this thing wobbles around. Maybe I shouldn't go for this. That is almost all this the fuel remaining in this stage as well. Um All right. Do have 2637 meters per second of delta V on the next stage though, so it should be able to comfortably land and take off. Uh, let's just... Let's go prograde and see what we can do. Get ourselves nice and high. So the so the these engines do not appear to have alternators, um, which means what I need to do before I do my landing burn to get down to Minmus, I need to fully charge this up, then do the landing, try and make sure I've shut down everything I possibly can before I because then I'll when I disconnect the rover I'll have no means to recharge. I am sure many people still use Excel because many companies don't like the idea of people using Google Sheets from a security point of view. Alrighty, here we go. Let's do a bit of a... Get this into a higher orbit, and then I'll change my inclination there. The alternative to Excel is not Google, it's pencil and paper. Yeah, yeah. Well, Valentina's at worst pensive. She never really seems to get beyond that, but all three are pensive right now. Oh, no, now she's happy. So as people have told me, I should try and get my... my orbit high before I do my the ascending descending node changes because less speed change required but I probably should have done it at the descending node so that when I did my apoapsis it was, I was going really slow when I hit my apoapsis it was also where I needed to do that node I wonder if that's correct 
Feels like it would be. Just thinking about another 50 years of peace and quiet. <laughs> oh, I don't want to... I, I, I'm going to do my best to get Val home. On this mission. <laughs> this is the beauty of me rushing some of this stuff. I'm all, like... I get a few comments with some regularity about uh, the mistakes that get made during like our space engineers recordings and series and things and how I'm always rushing and all this sort of stuff part of the reason I rush myself through preparations for start for things like this is specifically so that I do end up with uh, mistakes because they're fun to recover from and they're fun to have to figure out solutions to uh, no, Tex, Val is on board this rocket right now. Well, so yes, she is twiddling her thumbs in orbit. Um, but I suppose she's piloting this, so not really twiddling. <laughs> Val's thinking at least I have company, just a shame it's these two numbskulls. Yeah, probably. I imagine she doesn't think too highly of her compatriots. Having left her in space for so long, I think it's quite reasonable for her to be a bit unhappy with them. Why can we get... All right, that's that's a start. Set up a node. Rotate round to maneuver node. Oh yeah, only six seconds of burn to do this. Cool. <clears throat> yeah, some some theories about Kerbals are that they're effectively a blob of intelligent algae. Which I guess works as well as anything. Warp to there. See, I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to use things that I don't use very often. <laughs> I'm trying to be better. I mean, the title of my save for this series was how to not be bad or how to... Something like that. It was basically me trying to get better at Kerbal. And I think I have. I wouldn't say I'm good yet, but I've gotten better. Wait, um, Tex, were you, before I read off your comment, were you somehow combi combining the concept of Kerbal being photosynthetic with Kerbal mod for RimWorld? 
If kerbals are photosynthetic, they can generate power from light, which means you, if you expose a kerbal to sunlight and chain them to a treadmill, you could use them to charge a battery with solar power. Uh... Yes? Also... <laughs> how very Rimworld <laughs> of you? <laughs> hmm. Yeah. I'm not sure what to do about the electric charge. I do have an alternator on this particular engine, and I am now at the correct thing. If I can spin myself around... Oh, wait. If I just turn off my SAS, I'm getting power. At least every time I show them to the sun. <laughs> okay. When the panels are in sunlight, I'm going to do a time warp. <laughs> Which should be okay. <laughs> uh, this fills me with fear. How is that not going up? The panel is in the sun. Why is this not working now? These guys. These guys are all on. Um, Turn you off. Motor enabled. Disabled. Disabled. Disabled, disabled. Okay. That's the problem. I just go... No, not, not enough. Uh... Hmm. What to do? I don't want to mess up my orbit. I'm trying to figure out how I can get this to rotate the way that I want to without just... Hibernate in warp. Ah, oh, I should just probably put them on hibernation on anyway. I think the rover was chewing all the power. I think that's what was doing it. Because I was using... I was effectively running the wheels anytime I was trying to rotate. Uh, adjust my heading. I'm just trying to think what's my best way of getting enough power to turn such that the sun's going to hit the solar panel, but I might just run through an orbit and see if it hits the panel at any point. But I think I might be facing in like the perfectly wrong direction for that to happen. And I think I might have to stuff up my my orbit to fix it. Yeah. Alright. I might do something when I'm close to periapsis so I make the least impact on what I'm doing. Oh wait! What am I doing? I've got an engineer on board! I can move one of these solar panels to the ship!
What am I doing? Someone in the comments is going to be screaming at me until they hear me say that. Watching the VOD going, Why didn't he figure this out? So Uh, how do I enter building mode again? Was it I? Yeah. Need you to get a bit further around and we'll move that again. Problem solved. <sighs> no more problem. I'm so glad I had two solar panels. Because I'm probably going to need both on the rover anyway. Uh, I can collapse the one that's on there so it doesn't snap off when I detach the rover. Okay. <sighs> that feels better. Much better. Uh, right. So that was the main failure point for this mission. What was it? It was the one I was expecting to be the main failure point. Uh, let's go and set up for a prograde burn. <laughs> yeah. That seems the best Kerbal Engineer there ever was. I have seen no proof to the contrary. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Yep. Totally. Oops. Is it bad that I want to watch a Kerbal the Barbarian movie starring Jeb now? Who would play Ker who would play Jeb though, Tex? What actor do you want playing Jeb? Now we're going to be rid of the extra bit. So just make sure I didn't mess my staging good. So is there a way to change my control orientation? Or do I need to change to controlling from one of the rover parts? Control point default, reversed, default or reversed. Uh, don't think reversed gives me what I want either. Or does it? Yeah, reverse doesn't help me. Because reversed is a full 180 switch. So I think if I set control from here... Will work. Maybe? Question mark? Uh. The 
doesn't look right. Draw point up or forward. I think this is correct. That looks like prograde because I was I was prograde when I detached, and I've now got all my thrust pointing prograde again. Okay, so that should be the correct orientation. All right, let's see if I can figure out a Minmus intercept from somewhere on this orbit. Okay. Looks like I should be able to. Burn of 199 meters per second. Periapsis of 110 kilometers. That's all right. Might be able to swing this around a bit further and make it even cheaper. Still. Yeah, that'll do. 180. All right. Maneuver node. Let's hope I haven't messed this up. I'm so pleased. I'm so pleased that I figured out um, to you to move the solar panels. Because, man, that bit was stressing me out. That was that was the real point where I was expecting to have a failure on this mission. Burn time is twenty seconds. All right, so let's warp to here. Yes. The light bulb moment. I'm also slightly I'm happier with that moment because I genuinely didn't see anywhere in chat suggesting it. So it meant I actually came up with the solution myself. <laughs> Which seems rare enough. Uh, right, another 31 minutes. I walk away for a few minutes and now I need to draw something. What happened? What happened was Tex... Tex's brain went from Kerbal Space Rimworld to Jeb the Barbarian. That's what happened. I've got to admit, Jeb dressed up as a Barbarian would be kind of funny. Alright, let's hope this is correct. Oh, we're getting some spinning. We're getting some spinning. I knew my I knew the thrusters weren't gonna be perfect, but I was hoping they were gonna be better. Especially since they do have some Gimbal. Okay. 
Okay. Keep going. Keep going. No, it's not that large a leap text. No. That Minmus intercept. What's my periapsis for Minmus? 805 down to 40. Perfect. Alright. Plenty of fuel. This will be good. Alright, let's warp to here. Yeah, I may well be able to use this um, transfer stage or this landing stage for getting most of the way back to Kerbin as well. Which would be handy. There's a small part of me that is wondering if I detach the rover, drive it away, drive it back, and then collapse the landing legs, would the rover be high enough to, re <laughs> to reattach it to the... To the connector here. Node in one day. Shall you can press and hold X to jump the rover? Yes. <laughs> hmm. Eleven seconds of burn. All right. Up to there. Alrighty, here we go. Getting into orbit. This is somewhat further than I expected to get when I barely made it to orbit of Kerbin. Uh, <laughs> I, I guessed, like, with what? I'm technically, if I don't detach the command module stage, I have 2,400 meters per second of delta V. I imagine there are some people who would be capable of getting a propulsive landing to work with that, but I am not one of those people. trying to push myself here but I'm also trying to do it without killing any Kerbals <laughs> which adds a degree of challenge oh I should have started burning early I forgot I can't do full thrust burns I have to get Bill out there and see if he can rotate the things a little bit fix up my center of thrust or move them main thing that worries me about this is coming down to land if I don't have stable thrust at higher thrust amounts deceleration is going to be a challenge
See you, Shadow. Alright, we're in orbit. It's a weird orbit, but it's an orbit. Uh, I might try and drop the orbit on my next pass. I want to be going as slow as possible when I come in for my landing, so I'm going to bring my circularized orbit as low as I can reasonably. Otherwise I'm going to come in way too hot. Yeah, something like 15 would be pretty good, I think. 20? 20's probably okay. Just not a hundred and something. Perhaps is now at 18. We'll go 18. Coming in hot with Minmus is hard to do, but just, like, remember, if I throttle over about 20%, I start flipping. So I... I'm right at the limit of what I can actually do. Because my thrust weight... Oh no, my thrust weight ratio is now 19? Is that correct? Maybe I will be okay. Thought it was said four before. No, thrust rate ratio 1.94. What? It's confused. Oh, okay. Right. With that tiny little bit of thrust active, my thrust rate ratio is ridiculous. Uh, which way am I spinning? Okay, we're going to have to wait till one of these flats comes into view. I'm not going to land on the rough bit. I'm landing on a flat in the daylight. Okay, here we go. This should be time for landing approach. Oh, uh, before I get too excited... Oh, nope. Overshot. Where's my science? I've done all the science in orbit, cool, that I've got on me at the moment. Excellent. Apparently I'm spinning. Come on. Just turn retrograde. No, <laughs> I don't know if I'm spinning or I'm flipping. Either way, it works. Alright. Boy, the landing gear before I forget.
This is going to be... I think this is the first time in about... I reckon, like, five years, maybe longer, that I've actually managed to move a rover to another planetary body in KSP. I think by the time I've reached this stage of building stuff, I've always kind of had some Kraken-related disaster and given up. Yes, exactly, Marcus. It's upside down, right way up, upside down, right way up, vomit. I've got heaps of fuel. I'm not afraid to burn as much as I need to to get this to work. Uh, we are... Oh, it's Minmus, so it doesn't matter. They're both the same because we actually land at sea level. Limit thrust on the back ones. Maybe. That might be able to balance it. You Good thought. Because they do seem to be pushing harder, don't they? Oh no, now I'm rolling. It's causing roll. It's actually roll is the problem. Uh oh. Uh, I think it might be a time for an abort. Yep, it's time for an abort. No, retrograde. Yeah, that was going badly. I could see that going only badly. The rover's intact, though. Ooh. The rover is somehow intact. Can I get it free? Ah, uh, what? Stop moving! <laughs> I can land this. I can land this! I only reduced one. Oh, it didn't mirror it. That's annoying. Do I have enough fuel to land and take off? Maybe. We'll try. No, I'm not reverting. We don't do that. No reverts. Never. If the rover's still intact and I can drive it, I'm counting this as a win. Is that? That was the specification. It was. <laughs> uh, definitely need to fix the balance of that stage up a lot.
So we've got 1500 meters per second of delta V right now. I'll probably have about 1400 after landing. There we go. All right. Set as target. All right. Uh, might take. Might take Bill to go and grab the rover. <laughs> uh, have I missed any science here? No. Do 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 do. Rockets on. Drawing. Uh, the capsule has a degree of heat shielding built in, so that's my return heat shield. Back seating allowed. Do the back seats have seat belts? Hmm. No. <laughs> no, you bounce around, floating loose in the back seat. Three kilometers left to travel. Traveled just under halfway. Thanks, Don. Thank you for the prime sub. Let's see what we're coming upon. Oh, what state is it in? And can Bill fix it? Oh, that's unfortunate. Fully upside down. Have an idea, though. Yeah, I'm going to close the bay, and then I'm going to move one of the legs and try and use the leg to flip it over. In fact, is the, is the rover even technically attached? Huh. Not really.
Uh oh. Okay, Bill doesn't like being in here. Oh. Um, what? Uh, what? That's not cool. That shouldn't have exploded. This, yeah, what was I saying about rovers and the Kraken? Yeah, exactly. This, <laughs> this is why I've always gotten to this stage and then been like, I get it right. <sighs> Structural failure on linkage between modular girder, small adapter, and Mark III cargo bay. So that connection that I didn't think was real just decided to update when I stood inside it. That's a degree of lesson learned, I suppose. Hmm. All right. I need I need an opinion. I need a chat opinion. Uh Does Kraken allow for a reload uh, obviously if I did a reload I would cancel all the votes like the predictions and I'd restart the prediction uh, again for the next launch hopefully with you know solar panels where they need to be and all that sort of stuff <laughs> yes bugs are bad okay Nope. Bill is gone. Now I don't have a quick I didn't have a quick save because I didn't think about having a quick load. Um which means that I um I would have to revert to vehicle assembly or launch. And I think if I think honestly we go back to vehicle assembly and try and fix some of the mistake the things because trying to do that all again, fixing it dynamically, doesn't feel as much fun as actually trying to fix it properly. So far, <laughs> it is eighty eight percent for yes bugs are bad. Okay. Which is exactly why I have revert as an option. It was to deal with bugs like this. Um, I will never revert if it's my mistake that causes the problem. Which one could argue this was my mistake that caused it because I did mess up the thruster position so I did eject this without it landing neatly. Um, but equally, come on. <laughs> That was, that was hop in a seat. Boom. <sighs> yeah, I thought it was salvageable. I thought it, like, if I knew that having a detached component like that was a problem, I would have tried to get a uh, build to rebuild the rover from scratch.
All right. I think with most of the voting time gone and 91% for yes, reload because of bugs, uh, we'll be doing a reload, which means I will cancel the prediction and everyone just gets their points back because I don't feel right picking an answer based off how things played out. <laughs> that just doesn't seem fair. Uh, but yeah, when the votes are 60 to 6, the answer is clear. Uh, let's cancel the prediction. And I'm ah. No, don't choose outcome. Click on the right thing, Splitzy. And the poll is... Closed. Late. And return points. Revert to vehicle assembly. Alright. So. <laughs> a few things. One. This thing doesn't have enough oomph. With the skiff in the middle. So we might build a custom launch stage that's a bit more efficient. Uh, two. This is not remotely balanced for thrust. Um, how did I turn this one? Oh, if I thrust limit it down to zero. Yeah, the rear ones are just a bit further from center mass, aren't they? Okay, something I'm thinking... But I'm not sure um, is a good or a bad idea. What if I rotate these engines so they both point a bit inwards? Well, it probably doesn't help in any meaningful way. I was just thinking whether it would give me something more balanced thrust. I think that's still off. Uh, let's move this just a little bit up. That's as close as I can do. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, center of mass does move as fuel burns. Not a huge amount. Uh, but yeah, it does. I've got more fuel this side of the cargo bay than I do on this side that's accessible to these engines. But I've got more fuel total on this side than is on this side. So mass while it's fully fueled up is pretty balanced. But as they run out, it's still not too bad. Yeah, nothing changes with extending or retracting the legs. Don't think anything ha changes with that either. It's still a bit off. What I'll do this time as well, to try and improve, I can try and improve flight stability once I'm actually using the thrusters as well. So once I'm in orbit and I'm using these to do maneuvers, I can get Bill out and I can try and 
tweak their rotation a bit and do things like that to try and uh, get it. Yeah, large reaction wheel could probably be an option here too. That's a good point. That's probably not a bad idea just to give me a bit more oomph. Although, I don't think I've got the large one. I've only got this one. Let's save and just check how much science is required for the large one. I'll put RCS on it for extra control. Oh, I've got enough science. I can get this one. All right, let's get this. Brute force a bit more stability out of it. I think it's a good idea. Um, pop that off there. Tempted to put them like that. Have a pair. Yeah, if it won't fit, use a hammer. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Alright, let's check our thrust and things. Yep. That's what I expected. I think that's pretty good. Now when you crash, you can roll it over. That's a good point. If they survive, <laughs> I can roll it over. It's a valid point. All right, now. We need some solar panels. I uh, might go with... Yeah, they'll go with these, these guys. That'll do. That's all the that's literally all I needed from solar panel from the solar panel side of things. Um and then I need to make a booster to send this up into orbit. No. <laughs> No, I'm not going to use the giant asparagus. I don't need it. Uh, we'll go this, but make a couple of small changes to it. Such as putting a mainsail in the middle. Oh, just tiny. Skiff. So we've got the skiff, which is 300 kilonewtons, and then we've got the main cell, which is 1300. Perfect. Better stability. I'll check my staging. We should be good. Stabilizer legs on the nose and tail in case of bounce. Um. It was pretty, like, it's pretty stable. 
Oh, actually, that brings up a good point. Hang on. Um, detach that. My legs are not evenly spread about center of mass. has to be there. No, oh well. It's a little bit further away, anyway. So, problems from last time were these thrusters didn't provide even thrust, which made it very difficult to perform any sort of maneuvers while in space or approaching Minmus. And then in an attempt to fix it, I thrust limited only one side, not realizing that it wasn't doing symmetrical thrust limiting. Uh, I don't know why I was thinking it was going to be like the VAB. There was no reason it should have been like the VAB, so I should have had both up and adjusted both. Um, so that was that was the big problem for landing on Minmus. And then the other part was that I had no power. <laughs> so I fixed the power. I've hopefully got um, some bits here. Thank you for the reminder that I've shoved a fin in there. Let's get rid of that. Um, and that should be it if I get the staging right. Yeah. All right, so we got our boosters, which are not super great. But then we got these five engines, which give me thrust away ratio of 2.24. Not bad. Not bad at all. Then we blow those two. Then we blow those two. Then we finally pop that, ignite those. Those go, that pops, those, that, cool. Oops, hit the wrong button. <laughs> I was meaning to hit save. Ugh. Uh. I want to hit save. <laughs> so I want to save the rocket. Okay. Let's start a prediction. Do the same one as before. Oh. Belly up or belly down? That. Yeah. As long as as long as I actually take the time to balance my thrust and not just try and overcome it, or hopefully these reaction wheels will just be able to overcome the thrust imbalance through <laughs> brute force. Um, if that's if that's okay, then I think we'll we'll pull this off. And not having to spend three hours in low, in high altitude trying to get into orbit, <laughs> that might help too. Uh, Alright. Three, two, one, blast off. Oh. 
Oh yeah, good point, Jolly Hair. I will also have to check the thrust balance before taking off from Minmus once I've detached the rover. Uh, Ventral is right. From this orientation. Anytime I... Like, if I get a bug and we end up doing a reload, anytime I do that, I will just cancel the predictions, because I just... I feel like if we're going outside the established rules, better just to cancel it and restart. Yeah, the capsule definitely has a fairly strong inbuilt reaction wheel. Huh, one of my boosters is getting hot. Now it's getting hotter. Looks like a meerkat on alert. Yeah, I can kind of see that. <laughs> okay, our pops is at 52. Yes, this, this launch is going substantially better. And... Stop about 85, I think. There we go, that's more reasonable. A minute 23 burn, rather than five minutes. <laughs> okay, solar panels extended. Means we're uh, neutral on power, even with those big reaction wheels running. I should um, turn off all these wheels too. Oh, so much better. <laughs> this is so much better. <laughs> uh, Taz, I will look, stream KSP2 as soon as I am able to. I'm looking forward to it. I'm not expecting it to be awesome, but I'm looking forward to playing it regardless. Because I, yeah. There we go, that makes me feel better. And 
last up. All right. <laughs> something like that I should because I'm I did a much more efficient ascension to orbit I should be able to go further out in fact I wonder Can I do an immediate get to... Nah, I won't bother. I'll do it stepwise. Alright. Uh, let's warp ahead a little bit. Uh, no, I'm going to get a higher orbit, then I'll match plane, then I'll uh, get into, then I'll match up with Minmus. It seemed to be fairly efficient. I have no idea if I'm right or wrong on that, but it seemed to be fairly efficient last time. I'm probably not going to go quite as high as I've set this to be, but I'm going to get, you know, outside the moon. And then I'll fix up my ascending node because it's cheaper to do that there. Either way, I've got so much fuel, it's fine. <laughs> I would normally adjust the planes first, but after learning that you that it's much more efficient to adjust planes at a higher orbit, and I need to get this to a higher orbit anyway, does it sometimes make it more efficient to adjust later? I imagine the optimum is to kind of set up my Apoaps is in such a way that my next burn isn't... Actually, I don't think I can think through the what would be optimum properly. That'll be fine. Alright. There we go. Because now, when I reach my ascending node, I'm going to be going super, super slowly. Which also means that the adjustment I need to make for it is tiny. Teeny wee. We go 0. 0.3 seconds of burn. Very teeny weeny. Da, 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 da. Yeah, now my <laughs> my orbital velocity is under a hundred meters a second. How far am I away from here? Let's get onto the mark and then I'll warp there. Don't do the little pulsing shenanigans. Or 
degrees. Let's get a bit closer. Three degrees. Alright. Zero. Perfect. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. I did this pretty well. I got really lucky. All I need to do is a tiny little extra burn at Periapsis and I'll be... <laughs> I'll be on an intercept. I can't believe I timed this burn. I think this is almost exactly what I should be doing if I'm not worried about how quickly I get there. Is go to a high orbit, change my inclination, come back through on the next pass and just pop the last little bit to intercept with Minmus. Alternatively, I guess, if I set up a Minmus intercept or something that would get me just below it or above it on the orbital plane and then adjust somewhere as I'm approaching. Correct the burn once I get close. Maybe that's quite efficient. This seems pretty good, though. I've still got my transfer stage by the time I get there by the looks of things. All right. It's a pretty straight line for space travel. Yes, it is. Ah, <laughs> oh, the puns in chat. The puns. Always the puns. Point two second burn. Right. Up here. Eight days. I definitely got lucky with where my burns are, <laughs> where I did things. Uh, I'm going to close that. I'm just going to pulse until this works. Go almost. Okay, we have a Minmus periapsis of 1.7 million. Down to 800, 700, 500, 400, 300, 72, 35, done. Really couldn't have hoped for much better here. What the? Oh, I hate when that happens. <laughs> you were blipping that throttle and I was wondering why you were rubbing a beard against the microphone. Hmm. I hate it when it does different things in time warp to not time warp it stresses me out there we go
this has been a substantially less eventful <laughs> launch than the previous one. Which is what you'd hope with the amount of mistakes I made on that first one. I was really disappointed that that crackened out. Um, I was so hoping that I could manage to make that launch work even without the thing set up properly. It was really disappointing. Two minutes. Now, I'm going to have to ditch this stage to do some tests, test burns with the lander stage while in orbit, rather than doing them all as I'm coming down and frantically having to make adjustments. Let's stop there. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, let's detach. That looks good. How high is my app? So 72. All right. Let's see how this goes. Oh, so much more stable. Oops. I've. Whoops, I went too far. <laughs> okay. Um. Uh... Go prograde and fix that. I'm so excited by it just working that I went too far. There we go. We'll come around and land on the next pass. Somewhere around here, maybe a bit further, 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 there. Should do quite nicely. Now, there's no reason to retract the solar during landing. Uh, there's no atmosphere, so there's nothing to apply forces to it. So it's best just kept out. Yeah, as long as they don't hit the ground. Okay, so there's the ground to apply forces to them. That could happen. <laughs> but um, nothing, no atmosphere or anything to push against them and snap them off. The force I'm worried about is splitsy. Yeah, fair enough. And see why that would be a concern. Boss, I'm worried about is the Kraken. This is looking pretty good. 
I definitely needed those reaction wheels just to overcome, just to overcome the inability to get things super precise, or at least I don't know how to get things super precise in terms of the weight distribution and balance and things. This is how I imagined the previous landing going. <laughs> Coming in nice and softly. On the moon they said that the eagle has landed, but here it'll be the cow has been tipped. I did not put an antenna on it, no. Because I got the Kerbals, I didn't worry about an antenna. I did not name it the cow tipper, I should have. I didn't really look at it and realise how much it looked like a cow until that was mentioned in chat just then. I'm like, yeah, that does look like a cow. A terrible attempted a cow, but a cow nonetheless. Alright, 1400 meters off the ground. Still got like 80% of my fuel left. I had a Roma named that once. Then Shaq happened. Yeah. That sounds like a thing that would happen. Nine hundred meters. Come on. Come on, successful landing. Uh yes, it is definitely actually this range, because it's identical when you're landing on Minus's flats. Five hundred meters up. Just got a tiny little bit of thrust coming from the engines just to keep us nice and slow. Once I get a bit close to the surface, I'll knock off the last few meters a second. Suicide burn? No! <laughs> Any burn in my hands might be a suicide burn, so I don't want to do a proper one. I have no idea how to calculate a proper suicide burn. That's part of the reasons I've never done them. Like, I genuinely don't know how you calculate when to do a suicide burn other than trial and error. Um, and that's not really calculating, that's just doing it till it doesn't explode. Thanks, Cutthroat Gaming. Thank you for the prime sub. Here we go. Ah, oh, look at that. That was perfect. <laughs> that just, that was so smooth on the springs of the landing gear. Thanks, Funks. Uh, Alright. Let's enable the motors. And... Let's... Drop it off, I guess. 
And Doc. Seems like we're going to have the same problem we had on Kerbin. <laughs> of uh, trying to get this out from underneath. But that's okay, because I can adjust the height of these, these wheels so that I can get under. Alright, Bill. It's time for you to go EVA. <laughs> Thanks for the gift sub. Yeah, it's Josh. Thank you very much. Uh, and thanks for the Prime Sub, Colibet. Mine's a bit of the Firefly. Yeah, I can see that. Well, we didn't have explosion that time, so that's a positive. Wait, how did I do the... Oh, there we go. I was trying to remember how I corrected the control scheme because it's all wonky. Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah. Num. Ah, oh, spring. There we go. Oh dear. <laughs> it would appear I need to be heavier. Hmm. Let's just see. See if we can get out anyway. Doop. Do some Austin Powers turning here. This is an ideal. Thought I'd be able to get... I thought these were going to be propping it up higher than they did on Kerbin, but they have not. Yeah, actually, I could move... I could try moving the ship. I'm worried, though, that my thrust is all over the place now, though. Uh, I have another idea, though. There we go. We're free! <laughs> I was a bit worried about the, the solar spoiler as I came out then, not gonna lie. <laughs> I was a little bit worried. Uh, let's extend that solar panel. Let's extend that one. Uh, let's switch, and we're going to bring Bob. So we can go set up some science. Alright, Val, you know what to do. Wait here.
It's here while these two fools go off and do some science. Jeb is back on Kerbin. Alright, I'm going to have to get a screenshot of these two. Break there. Let's turn off the HUD. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Alright, so the next thing to do is bring up sex X science. Seismic scan. Bob. Leave your seat. Take the data from there. Uh, then get back in your seat. So what did I need to set up some regular old science, which I maybe should do here, actually. I should set up the regular science right near where I've landed, and then um like the deployable science, and then I can take some of the stuff from the command module. Well, this isn't disconcerting at all. Not disconcerting at one bit. Uh, thank you for the reminder about the suspension. I, yep, should fix that back up. Alright, Bob, you got things to do. Leave the seat. Let's go to that one first. Drop the parachute on the ground. Because I can't. Hmm. Anyone know what I can do with this parachute? Because I don't think I've got room in here either. Oh, wait, hang on. I know what I can do. Uh, that in there. And that's too big as well. Hmm. Yeah, can I drop it on the ground? Oh, wait. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Nope, still too big. I don't... I can't see a way to drop stuff. Bill can drop it on the ground. No, I'm not removing my helmet.
No, Bill doesn't seem to have a way of dropping it either. No, I I can't swap with the light. The light's too big. I gotta find something that's small enough that I can deploy it while carrying something out, like carrying the other things. The solar panel's too big. Um, I gotta find one of the things in here that's small enough. There we go. What the? I think I just swapped it into Bob instead of into Bill. And Bill's my engineer. He should be the one setting this stuff up. I forgot. Uh, rub, rub. Nope. All right, what's... Okay. Step one. Deploy something. Anything. Doesn't matter. Now... Is it just the solar panels I meant to get the engineer to set up? Or are there other things? Can't remember. It's really hard to move small amounts on Minmus. Alright. <laughs> now that I've got clear space, I can actually do this stuff. Uh, I think that... Is there a way to pick stuff up once it's been dropped, or is it once it's dropped, it's done? For this mission, it was surface-deployed seismic sensor science. Okay. Didn't need to be anywhere in particular. Almost got it all. Finally the transmitter. Should start doing things. So we've got total power needed four, total power eight. Oh, there we go. If I if I interact, I can pick up the part.
Science, 0 0.07 per hour. See if it's any better once I deploy it with Bill, with Bob. One point one two five, yeah, considerably better getting it set up by Bob. That's massive. All right. Well, those are set up now. Let's get into the rover. Oh, wait, no. Let's go get the... Ex uh, yeah. Get the... Which of these? That's the repair kit. I don't want the repair kit. I want the science. Perform EVA science. Thanks, Gilbert. Thank you for the prime sub. Dunk. Hooray! 125 science. Alright. Let's go do some driving. Oh, I suppose... I'll get, I'll get Bill to pick up the repair kit since he's the engineer. Go around and get those repair kits. I do have my jetpack stowed, but at least they're stowed on the rover. Yeah, jetpack and parachute. I think I've duped a jetpack, though. Oh, no, wait, I haven't. Oh, that's, it's still stowed. Just got to hope they don't get destroyed at some point. <laughs> Looks like you can push the rover with your face. That may help it get into a loading position. True. Um, so, which direction should I be heading in? Is that a different flat? I guess I can drive off that way. As good a direction as any. We can turn off our lights. Oh yeah, the the um the rover is not coming back to Carbon. The rover is staying here. Uh, let's open up this science monitor. Check that I'm heading in vaguely the right direction. I have no idea. I think north, and I think I'm heading a bit that way ish. Possibly want to turn a little bit further left. Also not sure how fast I want to go. How <laughs> fast I dare to go. <laughs> so I'll transfer the science from the rover. Oh no, this is before I saved it. No, I don't have the science carrier. Oh. I'm going to have to use the Kerbals to carry the science. I can only go a little way before... Ah. I didn't realise that it reset it.
Yeah, on the flats going that fast is probably safe, but I am getting closer to the edge of the flats. <laughs> and I don't think I can slow down very quickly. But I'm also impatient, so there's that. Do 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 uh physics warp? Yeah, there we go. Uh I'd say those hills are further than you think. If we have a look on the map. I've made it about halfway to them. Glad I learned about physics warp. Man, that makes <coughs> that makes this stuff a lot less painful. While still being, I guess, safer. Is that a moon rock? I mean <gasps> Oh no. Oh dear. Uh, this wasn't Physics Warp. I turned off Physics Warp. I just turned too sharply. I accidentally turned further than I meant to. Okay. <laughs> Nobody died. Uh, we are in a different biome. So we're going to do some science. No, 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 no. I did bring repair kits, remember? So, uh, let's get Bob. Leave seat. Bob's my my scientist, so what Bob's going to do is collect the data from there. And restore. Take the data from there. Take the data from there. Collect the data from the goo canister. And restore it. Take the data from the barometer. Okay, then get in the seat. Then Bill, hop out. You're going to repair these solar panels. And this one. And just for the sake of safety, we're only going to extend one of them. <laughs> Yeah, brought repair kits, but not bath bags. That's true. Uh, I have an EVA and surface sample, but I might as well take another, another one for... N no, I'll leave it. Okay. So, there was a rock out here that I'm wondering... If I go... Let's just do the thing. Uh, breaking ground. Surface features. 
Yes, it is a surface feature. Turn off the brakes. Let's drive over to that. Nice and slowly this time. Yeah, slow down to less than five meters a second, then turn. Yep, the aerodynamics are totally ruined. I did also forget, I do still have these two solar panels on the spoiler. Neither of them got knocked off. Can my scanner arm scan things like this? Or are there only specific things on the planet that it's... on the moon that it uh, actually scans? Scan green sandstone. Stop. Scan green sandstone. Oh, that's boring. Didn't give me anything. I must have collected one and taken it home before. Let's check. Oh yeah, I'm going to head up into the hills. Yeah, I've already gotten a green sandstone. Okay. Uh-oh. Well, that was a mistake. Uh-huh. What a landing! What a landing! Take sample is dangerously close to remove helmet button. Yes. Yes, it is. Breaks off. Let's roll. Yeah, see if I'll see if there are any um there's anything on the mountains on the hills. Oops. There's one up that way. Alright, let's head towards that. There really should be some inbuilt um scanner that helps you find surface features. Even if it's like a radar or warmer, colder sort of thing. Mindless searching is never my kind of fun. Seeing all these KSP streams makes it even harder to wait for KSP 2. There is. There is an in-game thing for searching for it. But it needs to be in orbit. Yeah. I did not know that. I now feel a little bad, but not really, for, for cheating, because the reasons I I messed around were because I've got, um, was it scatter it? No, uh, parallax, which makes it a lot harder. Hey.
One way down, orbiting above us. Yeah, imagining, imagine waiting, imagining waiting for mods to bring KSP2 to the level of current KSP. Yeah, my expectation of KSP2 is it's going to be a little bit like playing a new version of a game like The Sims before all the DLC get released. Um, hopefully, unlike The Sims, we won't have DLC to unlock all of the content, so we won't have to pay like $400 for the game, but I think it's going to be a bit like that. It'll be a step back in terms of content, but hopefully a step, some big steps forward in terms of what can, content can be added by things like mods. I reckon that is my surface feature. Yes, it is. And I think it might just be another green sandstone. Yeah. Does this give me a different scan? Scanning it on a different in a different area? Well, considering a number of the KSP2 devs are KSP modders, hopefully that's a good sign for KSP2 being mod favorable. Yes, I do have a loud mouse wheel. I turned it to... There's a mode I can do that makes it quiet, but it makes it also really hard to use. Because it's just free wheels. And <laughs> I'm so unaccustomed to it that I really struggle with it. Wheelie! Uh, that's a long way to drive. Do I drive... There, or do I try and drive up to the highlands up here? Hmm. Yes, it's the same mouse with the dying wheel. Yes. Not sure I want to fly. <laughs> I barely want it. I'm, I looked briefly at chat and then I noticed in my window off to the side that I was on three wheels and <laughs> I had to look back and go, oh, <laughs> I need to fix that. I think I might try and drive to the top of that hill there rather than go into those other flats. Oh, stop, stop, stop turning. Uh, I have no more repair kits on me. I only brought two. Which is why I've only deployed one of the solar panels. So if I smash this one off, I can deploy the other one still. Yeah, when I was doing my computer upgrade, I did look at some other Mises, but um, wasn't convinced by any of them enough to spend 100 bucks on them. That's how most of the, like, how expensive most of the decent ones are here. Or more. What was I doing the other day and I noticed that my left mouse button was being a bit iffy. What was I playing? Oh, RimWorld.
that was the thing that made me get rid of my previous razor mouse the left mouse button died KB it is the G502 I think I've got yeah 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 Do I even need that one deployed? Maybe not. The spoiler ones might be enough. I haven't forgotten about the prediction results. The mission isn't over yet. <coughs> I gotta get back to Kerbin alive and well for the prediction to end. Glad there's no collision on that boulder. I hope. <laughs> I started trying to slow down, but I was I was sideways, so if I slowed down too much, I was gonna roll. Probably far enough at physics warp. Whoa, 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 Don't you start doing that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> At least it's getting those exciting moments. It's just more sandstone. Oh, it's very close. The sand the sandstone does have colliders, so I need to be careful not to run into any. Alright, now we just gotta climb this hill. <coughs> and without tipping backwards. Also, I need more water. Uh, does it pause if I... Yes. One sec, let me fill up my water bottle. Not the clock. <coughs> yeah. 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 Alright, voice back. Mostly. Hopefully. Does this craft have a gyro? I don't know if the rove mate has a gyro control. Uh, doesn't look like it. I don't think it has any reaction wheels. So no. <laughs> Which might be part of the problem. I should probably, next time I build a rover, build something that has one. It has some reaction control wheels. Do 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 do. Alright, so back down, get some more speed. This compared to rovers in Space Engineers. This is like driving rovers in Space Engineers on the moon. It is similarly floaty and horrible. And kind of terrifying. looking uh, we're getting there I don't think I need to get the whole way to the top to change biome I just need to climb a bit once I get one more biome then I'm happy 
I'll head back to the to the return vehicle and see if I can get back to Kerbin in one piece. Oh yeah, <laughs> much harder to repair in this. I can so see that science monitoring thing in the top left. That actually tells me whether I've got new science to get where I'm at. And I currently do not. Because I am still in the lowlands. No! I really got to stop controlling the craft while I'm reading things. Can this rover be remote controlled? Technically, yes. Yeah, I should hit Midlands soonish. Uh, as I make my desk go into standing mode. Uh-oh. Hmm. The motor doesn't seem to be as happy today. It only did a tiny bit before it stopped. Stick bit by bit. Try not to wear out the motor too quickly. See myself having to replace this in about a year when it dies. No, the motor is barely rated for the workload that I'm giving it because I've made my desk heaps bigger than it was originally designed. I'm trying to drive at the same time as controlling my desk, it's complicated. Got right hand on the controls, left hand on the desk controls. My desk is some random brand from Officeworks. I have no idea what it is. All right, I think that's at me height. Yeah, that's comfortable. Elbow bent. Uh, I... I imagine with the right know-how, yes, I could upgrade the desk motor to a larger one. Uh, my plan is to wait till it breaks, then do it. Sounds like a great plan, doesn't it? Yeah, manual desk might have made some more sense had I thought at the time that I was going to near the max load limit. <coughs> if it breaks in the lowered or in the raised position, that's fine, as long as it breaks when it's in position. If it breaks in transition, problem. So it could be a fun stream trying to fix it. <laughs> Set up some cameras so I'm trying to fix my desk. That's quite steep. Yeah, so the, the load limit of the desk is supposed to be 150 kilos. I don't know if that's like load limit while moving. But I increased the size of the desktop from, I think it was 1800 by 750 mils 
and I've increased that to 2200 by 1050. Um, with timber that, at least for me carrying it, felt a lot heavier. Waiting for him to run into a rock that's not a hologram. Yeah. I'm hoping that doesn't happen. Uh, yes, I have all the Kerbal DLC. And a bunch of mods, too. Ooh, uh, my power is going down. Slowly. To keep in mind... Uh, honestly, Spirit of 76, I have no idea what the DLC add to it. Um, I just bought them the minute they came out because I knew I was going to play with them. I didn't really think about it or what they added. Someone in chat might know, though. But much like the Space Engineers ones, I kind of lose track of what's in what pack because... Knowing I was, like, especially Space Engineers, knowing that I, how much I play it, there was, there's never any question as to whether I'm going to buy it or not. Yeah, I thought it was, I thought it was mostly the operable mechanical parts, and it seems like that's true by what's being said. Rovers are... I remember building Rovers before they were even World DLC, so... If you bought the game, like... I think it was about two or three months earlier than I did, then you got all the DLC included. Forever. Which is why they had to make a sequel, I guess. See you, Tex. Far am I up the hill now? A decent way. Let's get some physics warp going. Need to speed this process up. Yeah, hope you're feeling better, Tex. Uh, so, on the topic of Icarus and Stationeers, those two games would be at the top of my going to play when I next have a slot available for another game. Games? They're the two that I most want to get back to that I've played in the past. It is entirely possible a new game could come and get in the way of them, but those two are currently at the top of my list. Uh, which is to say I don't know when I'll get back to them, but I they're right up there. What I suspect is going to change around the end of March, beginning of April, is more of my streams will be solo like this. Uh, to try and fit around having a newborn, I think, <laughs> I think going solo for more of my streams will be more practical. Because um, I won't really be able to fit around other people's schedules. I'll just have to kind of work it when I can. Yep, Assertive Acquisitions will be this week. And... I will... 
I had been thinking about um, how I was going to set up my other computer, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to record Survival Impossible without a separate time-lapse camera so that I can actually get back to it, because I, ever since redoing my office, I haven't had the extra computer set up. Uh, and Survival Impossible will probably be more prominent than Assertive Acquisitions once Mini-Me arrives. <laughs> Can't you just crash the baby with a kangaroo or something? <laughs> no, 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 no. None of this, thank you. Man, how high up this thing do I have to go? Um, there was, a while back, the extra perspective used to be recorded with my laptop, but my laptop can't keep up with the uh, Survival Impossible world anymore. My laptop's getting kind of old. Here we go. I've made it. I'm in the Midlands. I kind of want to not be quite so awkwardly angled. So I might get to the top of this little hill. Or at least to a... S Wait, is there a more level bit? No. Okay. We're gonna park here. Uh, EBA report. Surface sample. And observe. I can transfer all this when I get back. Look, temperature. My main PC does not do any recording these days. No idea whether running those analyses are actually worth doing. Um, okay. Does anyone know, I'm in the Midlands here, am I Highlands when I get up to this bit? Like, is it worth going just that little bit further? Is it another biome? Because I've already travelled all that distance. Uh, I kind of want to look at a biome map of Minmus. Alright. Um, where am I? Okay, I'm between those two bits. So I'm in between here, which means that's lowlands, midlands. So no, there's no highlands. The highlands are much further away. Okay, cool. Although there might be slopes somewhere in here that I could be finding. Because it does look like... Oh, it looks like it'll be slopes if I get a bit further up. Let's try. Let's go a bit further. Love having the ScanSat mod for assisting in-game biome determination. Yeah, I, I'm unfamiliar with all these mods, so I didn't know to add them when I started this playthrough. My main thing was... Let's get all the visual mods. <laughs> and so I found a post on Reddit where someone had posted a really cool looking screenshot. And 
had also listed the mods they were using, so I just copied their mod list and then it slowly grew from there. Um, I think, I think the top bit of this looked like the slopes section from that map. No, I did install parallax, I just didn't turn on collisions for parallax. Hey, Robob. Welcome. See you, Jofar. Here we go. Slopes. Alright, so Bob needs... No, Bill needs to get out of his seat. Uh, leave seat. He needs to grab the stuff from here. That should be all of it. Now, unfortunately, I already have an EVA report, which means I have to overwrite it. Um, I think the slopes are going to be harder to get, so I'm going to take the EVA report from the slopes and keep that instead. Uh, as well as the surface sample from the slopes. Then we get Bill out. No! Ah, oh, can someone remind me that I need to collect... Ugh. Apparently, I didn't have an EVA report for him. Restore that. Restore that. Ooh. Up in. And... Leave seat. And... Perform EVA science. <laughs> I don't know if this one counts as separate if it's in a different biome. I don't know if the EVA science is biome specific. Uh, I think it's not. Uh, I don't... I've already got the one where Val's at. Uh, like I've gotten it from a previous mission. I'll just have to get Bill to grab the... Midlands one as I go through the Midlands. There we go. Alright, time to turn around on the terrifyingly steep hill. <laughs> yeah, Val does keep getting the rough end of the stick, doesn't she? Constantly keeping an eye on this re the safe return craft while the guys go off and do their thing. Almost dying in a rover on Minmus. Now I have to safely get down this hill. I'm just going to try and get to the flats as close in the shortest distance possible because then I can go get some speed up once we're on the flats. 
All right, we're back in the Midlands, so let's break. Let's get Bill before I forget. Assuming I can actually come to a stop. Yeah, the the construction in KSP the, from the Kerbals is probably not good enough to do like a space engineers or the Martian style thing. Hopefully KSP2 will give us some options in that regard. Eventually, if not immediately. Uh, Bob. Get your EVA report, leave the seat, get some surface sample, get back in the seat. Alright, brakes off, let's go. Hope there's a native life support option. Hmm, yeah, yeah. Option, definitely an option. Having non-optional life support for Kerbal Space Program terrifies me. No end. <laughs> Am I counting down the 24 supposed days? Uh, not exactly. I've... I've... I've been really enjoying this playthrough, so I've, I'm not... like, itching for something to replace it. I mean, I'm looking forward to it, don't get me wrong, but I'm not, like, chomping at the bit. Gimme, gimme, because I... I've been disappointed too many times by getting hyped by something, so... I try not to be. I mean, Plato, none of those I had even the slightest bit of care about. <laughs> I didn't care about... I've never... I haven't cared about a Battlefield title since... Xbox 360, I think? And... Cyberpunk... Nah. Cyberpunk was a disappointment, but not for any of the game-broken sort of reasons. It was just... Loading it up, I was like... A little bit how I sometimes feel when I've loaded up a construction survival game that's got a sci-fi setting. Uh, when I loaded up Cyberpunk, I'm like, wow. I think I'd rather be playing GTA. And when I often play a construction survival game with a sci-fi setting, I go, huh, I think I'd rather be playing Space Engineers. Like, when there's something that's so much... I don't know, just... It has something that's just that much more... That viscerally better. It's really hard. And I, I've, I've enjoyed Halo games, but I've never, I'm not a, I've never been like a fan, I guess. <laughs> Watching you drive through those rocks is giving me anxiety for one of them being real. Yeah. I don't know why the rocks are transparent. That I don't know. I don't understand that. Um... They haven't been previously. So, <laughs> oh, that that was a real rock that was very close to my wheel. B 
But yeah, the my criticism of Cyberpunk is it lacks a sense of space. I feel very much when I'm walking around in it that I am walking around in a in a place that isn't real. Um, and in a place that's too small for what it is. Every time Splitsy drives to a rock, I have a deep sense of sadness that it wasn't real. How rude, KB. How rude. To the rocks, how empty their lives must be. Yes. I'm just hoping I can get down this steep bit of this slope without rolling. I think I've got my angle okay that I won't have a problem, but look how steep that is. Think of the rocks, how empty their lives must be. But he earns so much money doing those films. Wow. <laughs> uh, the man who contractually can't lose a fight. Or something like that. Uh. Yes, I could get down the hill Capac style, but I don't want to. I want these guys to be alive when I get to the bottom. He lost in the Scorpion King. Yes, he did, but that was before he had that in his contract, I'm pretty sure. When your face is used for a really bad CGI face in a movie that's otherwise had pretty good Oh, you're talking about, not The Mummy, you're talking about the actual Scorpion King movie. Man, I can't even remember what that one movie was like. It's a long time ago. But apparently in his recent movies, there he's got like contractual things around how fights with him go. <laughs> no one can remember it wasn't good. Yeah, well, that's probably fair. That is probably fair. Oh. <laughs> there's a part of me that really wants to physics swap, and then there's part, another part of me that really wants these two to survive and get back so I can get these guys back to Kerbin, unlock the big plane parts, and actually mess around with some SSTOs that are oversized. Oh no, I'm going down into a valley, I think. Oh. Yeah, it was same with Vin Diesel, that's right. So the two of them fighting each other was super awkward. Not that I've watched any of those movies. I've just never enjoyed them. I think I want to slow down a bit. Slowing down is hard. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh! Oh, that's bad. No! 
not again! Oh, man. Come on, please land the right way up. Please. Uh-oh. That doesn't look good. No! Oh! Oh! Come on! Come on! Come on, you can stay there! You can- you can land it! Stick the landing! Yes! 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 Nothing got damaged! <laughs> oh! Oh, yes! Yes! <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, man! <laughs> well that 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 was um that was a lot of luck <laughs> that landed the right way up <laughs> With Splizzy's driving, I should have voted Blamo. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, probably. I'm almost on the flats though, and then it's just 11 kilometers to travel. At breakneck speeds with physics warp. Would have waited with the desk. Uh. I'm going to try and slow down and not angle across the hill like I currently am. Yeah, nothing even got damaged there. That was the best part. Because I have my solar panels retracted. <laughs> I didn't even have to repair them this time. Oh, uh, if, if I use physics warp and things explode, that is a fail. Because that is a deliberate choice where I am rolling the dice just to try and get a mission completed in a reasonable time frame. Um, unlike me getting into a seat when I expected to just get into the seat and then everything explodes, that's a bit different. One is bug, one is hubris. Um, taking off with Val scares me a little bit, so I kind of only want to do it once. Because I, I know that the weight distribution is going to be really bad. Okay, I need to put the brakes on, this is getting steeper. If this is a bug of the brain. Uh, kind of don't want to think about brain bugs. <laughs> They're kind of hard to fix.
<laughs> the brain bug's afraid. Yeah. It's scared of what'll happen if people realize that the brain slugs are real. Almost, almost at the bottom. Almost at the easy drive part. So my thinking is once I get to the bottom, I can probably get myself up to maybe 10 or 15 meters a second and then physics warp to times three, which will get me home pretty quickly. Baseball bat would like to have a word with you and your brain bug. No! No, then my brain will have more bugs. Transition from here onto the flats is quite sharp. Hey, I've got points in the game, no warping. <laughs> Uh, you always know that there is a chance that I will do something that will break things. There's always the, uh, the, the splitsy element in any of these predictions. The me element. I always find it weird when I when I'm talking about myself like that. It's it feels equally weird to refer to myself in the first or the third person. And I really can't refer to myself in the second person. That's hard. Cuz it gets very confusing. Oh, drifted. Line ourselves up. We got 10 kilometers to go. It's time for speed and power. Nope, 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 no turning, just speed and power. Uh, second person would be you. First person is me, I. Second person is you. Third person is they, them, or referring to them by name. Thanks, Mesca. Thank you for nine months. Uh, I'm not lost yet, no. I, I've managed to not be lost. We are 8.6 kilometers away. Okay, I'm not lost yet. I will have to acknowledge that I did get lost on the way to space in this game. Which I really should have set up as a um, one of those moment things that I can do on Twitch, because <laughs> that's got to be an achievement. Um... Can anyone in chat remember how I did get lost to go into space? What did I do? I messed something up and I was... I think I had... Um, I think I had myself set to targeting something rather than to orbit. Oh no, I had... I was like controlling the rocket from the wrong, wrong control point and it messed me up. Six point four kilometers away. Yeah, I think I had a control point in the wrong spot or something. And I got myself confused and I somehow ended up 
getting lost to go into space. <coughs> I think the only person I know who could also potentially achieve that is TFA. That is something I have learned from editing Assertive Acquisitions, is that TFE can get lost pretty much as easily as I can. It's not used to being anywhere that's not a small island. Yeah. Although, TFV didn't really get lost in Grounded, he just gets lost a lot in AA. Tiffany is a... someone's... either deliberate or accidental miswriting of TFE. The... of his name. So, uh... I might have used it once or twice and now it's sort of stuck. Alrighty, 2.7 kilometers. Google auto caption calls him Tiffany. Oh, really? I didn't know that. <laughs> That's almost better. <laughs> Alright, we are two kilometers out. No, one kilometer. No, two. Jeez, it's even too small for me. And reading the pink against the green is difficult. Yeah, I mean, Capac is Catback. Uh, and a bunch of other things. Yay, we can see the cow! We're almost home! break and do a turn. All I know is I'm happy that Google no, no longer autocorrects my name to Splitwise. Some app that nobody uses, as far as I'm aware. Oh, some people use it, I think. It's like an app for splitting bills. But I, I don't think autocorrect is going to stop calling me solitaire anytime soon. Uh, Shadow won't be joining us in AA. It's very difficult to combine a CAPAC time schedule with a European time schedule. Ignore the wasted element, because wasted doesn't live on a European time schedule, <laughs> so he doesn't really count in this sort of thing. Uh, but for a vaguely normal European schedule, CAPAC does not combine. Uh, which makes doing anything with those two together very difficult. Uh, somehow, despite two flips, rolls, well, you know, two instances of flipping and rolling dramatically, uh, we've made it home safely. <laughs> Just wasted even live. Is he alive or is he an up uploaded ghost? <laughs> I, I don't think he'd be unhappy with that description. Alrighty. Uh, let's hop out. Leave seat. Ooh. 
Oh, what a landing! And he landed the spin too! Hello? Oh man, I have to get my jetpack on. No, I'm not going to attempt to dock the rover. That was never part of the plan. This part was, though. Store experiments. Let go. Whoa! Okay, let's go grab the other experiments. Collect data, remove data, restore. Since this is remote capable. That should be good. Uh. What the? Oh, there we go. Don't know why I couldn't take off for a second. And board. Leave your seat. Let's go grab your gear. Maybe set the rover back a bit before <laughs> lift off. Um, yeah, good idea. Belly landed ship makes me so nervous. Yeah, it'll be fine, probably. Uh, leave the seat. Alrighty. Feels good. Feels good to get them back to the capsule. Now, I'm going to do a thing that is... Oh, yeah, bored anyway. That is totally unnecessary, but feels right. Valentina, what are you doing? Stand up! You know what? <laughs> if you're going to be like that... Here. Plant a flag. Yeah, I've done the EVA experiments. They finally let me out of the ship. Okay. Uh, before I do the takeoff, I need to take a quick bio break. I'll be back in just a moment. Uh, let's do this one.
So, is there any way to get a center of um, mass and thrust overlay while in this view? I'm going to split he wanted to visit Midmus, it's teal. Yeah. Um. Because otherwise, I'm just going to have to guess at where I think the center of mass is. I think. It's about where the camera's putting me. I think that's put me pretty much in between, but maybe not quite. Uh, actually, I want to be more... Having more mass at the rear is not a bad thing. Yep, doing doing well, Everman. How's it going? Alright. Well, since there's no way to do this, let's close the science. Just don't need that open. And let's try and take off. Here goes. Oh, actually, um, let's wait here a day just to make sure that this stuff is working. Doesn't appear to be. Does anyone know why? Like what I might have messed up over here? Have I not activated it? Com signal NA. Ah. Connection state connected. Power units produced zero, required one, powered. Module enabled true, module deployed true. Yeah, but it's producing four power at the moment. There's enough power there. Grand Slam Passive Seismometer. Connected, powered, enabled. Experiment's connected to Com Signal NA. There's no Com Signal. Uh, aiming camera just aims my actual perspective rather than doing anything else. My ship has no comms too. I thought the satellite would have been giving me enough comms link some of the time. Maybe when it comes back around? Oh, well, maybe I have to send up some satellites so this thing can actually work. Yeah, a couple more sats could be good. Yes. Alright, well, now we know what the mission is for the SSTO I want to build, the big one. Alright, we're taking off during the daytime, because... better. Also, getting a screenshot of the cow. It's a can. Do, do, do. All right, here goes everything. Well, that was uneventful, just delightful. Gotta love having overpowered gyros. <laughs>
this is this is <laughs> very sedate. I deliberately took off very slowly because I wasn't sure at what point the gyros would start failing. Wait, am I hitting the? Oh yeah, that's fine. Right. I think my Apple apps might be high enough at a hundred thousand. It does look like a flying cow in a vacuum, it does indeed. Oh, alright, I don't have a different control point anymore, so I have to... I have to eyeball it using this thing. Which is working so far. See you, Everman. Where am I and where do I want to go? Just kind of want to keep going as I am. It'll work well enough. Maybe I'll come around and I'll push myself a bit toward... Yeah, toward Kerbin. About here. Switch around to prograde and then I'll figure out where I go from there. I want to be... Yep. Nose down. Eyeball navigation plus me equals fun. Agreed. Alright, let's burn. Leaving Minmus finally! Returning home. There you go, Val. Sometimes you don't have to stay up in orbit for years at a time. Sometimes it's only a month. It's working! Occasionally. No, the mystery goo's working, but the seismometer's not. Do I actually have to ram things into the ground for the seismometer to work? That doesn't sound right. Really? Huh. I mean, that's kind of cool. Uh, I shouldn't have come back with the whole cow intact then. There's a hammer pod to use for that. Hmm. All right. Well, that's that's the next mission then, I guess. Pretty sure. This will do the right thing. Yeah. 
Perhaps it's coming down. Yeah, I probably should have dropped an ascent stage. I, I could have dropped the cow. <laughs> At my breaking this time? Um, no, probably not. Whoop. Started flipping. <laughs> now let's try this again. That's where I want to be. Yep. Yep, perhaps this is dropping. Yeah, I'm thinking I'll make a satellite, like a deployable satellite to do relays for Minmus but then also have a part of it that's deployable from it that I can smash into the ground near it. Just because smashing is fun. Could the entire cow make it to the surface intact in Bellyland? Technically, maybe. As long as I don't keep paying attention to chat and losing attention on this and ending up in a bigger orbit than I started. Man, I think my fuel mass is really messed up. Come on, Orbit, down we come. I've always wanted to do a belly landed rocket. <laughs> I'm glad this worked. Eventually. It's definitely not happy right now. I put the thrust up even above like 5 or 10%. I can't keep it on target. Well, we're getting the periapsis down. I could speed things up with a physics warp while I'm doing this. That'll be okay. It's not like I'm going to hit anything except for Kerbin. Uh, my electric charge should be fine because I've got those two solar panels, the 1x6s, sticking out. <laughs> no, I'm not, not going to go to the moon. I'm not going to add an extra stop. It was I was tempted for a moment there, but decided no. Perhaps this is blow a million now. And it's even harder to hold on target now. Uh, Zeriel, Charlie is doing fine, I think. I think she's enjoying some sunshine. She's decided I'm not interesting enough and isn't hanging out with me in my shed today. Okay, down below 400k. 
Okay. Return. Two twenty. Come on. Yeah, I should try and see if I can shift the fuel to somewhere better. Periapsis is now at 70. 69. Close enough. Right, we'll get close to the point and then I'll start filling with some fuel. Let's see if I can work out where the center of mass is sitting. Yeah, it's sitting quite forward. So let's pin you, pin you, grab you, and go out. And stop that. You go out as well. See if I can shift it back even further. Thank you, Druid. Thank you for 31 months. Thank you very much. Okay, this should be a bit more balanced now. For the next burn. Which should be... The other way. Like so, and like... Nope. So. Should be about right. Ah, and I can actually throttle up a bit more and still remain stable. I don't think I'm going to need my dis like my descent stage at all. With the way this is going. Like, I should be able to do a re-entry burn using this, like, forcing myself into a re-entry trajectory using the cow. Can you imagine a few more legs that looks more like a tardigrade than a cow? Yeah, but... Does that make it a space bear? Right, let's go around again. Do another burn when we get around. I think the color is what sells it as a cow. Uh, the, the legs are in the wrong spot for a penguin. Like, especially when the landing gear are deployed. <laughs> it's definitely got the cow feel. Yeah, solar panels in, out, doesn't matter. I've got enough power to make it back now. An anteater wasted, really? You're gonna go that random? Uh, 
I should expect nothing less. What about a ferret? Yeah, maybe. A dachshund? Could be that too. I painted a like bur like brownie red. Crocodile or beaver? Hmm. Shift that mass. Yeah, I could drop the cow and go home easier. Yep. But the cow's almost empty. Almost out of milk. Looks like a snake that's eaten a big juicy rat. <laughs> But does it still look like a snake when the legs are deployed, Kavak? Does it? Hmm? 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 Evolution in action. <laughs> Alright. Uh, I think it's time to ditch this stage and return. Oh wait. Uh, this should be on a... Yeah. It's like a snake that's eaten a big juicy rat that managed that's managed to poke its legs out. <laughs> I can picture that. Just tenting of the snake's skin as the legs push. Oh, I was expecting that to spin further. I try and burn off the last of the fuel. Let's not do this, because this is going to get very da very dangerous very shortly. My periapsis is now at 38 kilometers. Lemo! Um. What? What's going on here? Huh? I can't activate my engine. Why isn't my poodle working? Oh, the thrust limit is at zero. Duh. God, I'd set that to figure all the stuff out while I was setting it up. And uh, what can I do here? If I go I do that. Yeah, something like that. I want to make sure I'm landing on the daylight side. It's more fun. Poodle configured incorrectly, minus 10 points. Yes. Yes, also, why isn't my poodle working is a uh, quite the uh, voice grab. Alright, 
Let's get my periapsis down because it's back up again. Something like that'll do. So pretty. Alright, down we're going. And because it's upsetting people, let's retract them. I'm going to ditch him in a second anyway. Yes, Capac, you did miss me flipping my rover over many, 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 many times and somehow sticking the landing. Right, let's fire them thrusters. Burn the rest of my fuel. Uh, Capac missed both of them. Both of them I stuck the landing somehow. Oh, you, <laughs> you clipped the first one and it's in the spoilers on Discord. Nice. Alright, check that. Let's float on down. Why is this spinning? Why do you spin? What is creating a spin on it? It shouldn't be spinning. It's not TFE operating this. Ready to deploy the chutes. Deploy the other chutes. Ooh. It's an unexpected deployment pattern. I forgot the big one had the triple shoots. Yeah, here we go. Once this has landed, let's relive the moment. <laughs> I just want to make sure this is actually getting down there first. Wait. Oh, that's that moment. Right. Yes, when I said the thing. My poodle is broken. Why isn't my poodle working? Hmm. Surface speed 6.9-ish meters. Pretty sure the collision tolerance of this is high of this is high enough. EVA report while flying low. Nope. Not doing that. The sploosh. Recover the vessel. How much science did I get? Is it enough to do the SSTO thing next week? Let's find out. Yep. Yep. <laughs> 1700 science. That'll do. That'll do nicely. Sweet. Uh, let's have a quick look at that. Relive that moment. Here we go. This is how bad I did. Or good I did. <laughs> uh, so glad I took those repair bits so that I could fix those solar panels. Doink. <laughs> yes, let's end the prediction. Choose outcome. Yep. 
Complete prediction. And there we go. What a landing. What a way to do it. Now, something a bit different is going to happen now. I'm, I'm going to wrap up my stream here. But I have a plan to go and join, I believe, Capac and uh, Wasted playing a game called... Um, Stolen Realm. Or is that a note, what, Kavak? Or are we doing RimWorld? What are we doing? You never told me what the plan was. There was communication failure. You didn't use hammer time, did you? <laughs> okay. Alright, so we're going to go do some RimWorld then. I am hanging around. Um, that's all for KSP though. Although, I'm just going to leave it on this, because this is better. Um, Kabak and I are going to jump in and do some RimWorld if he gets into TeamSpeak, because I'm already there. Uh, where we are trying to survive some dinosaurs. But I'll be back in just a moment with that. Uh, let's go with some... Be right back on the... What's it called? Hourglass. Turns out even hammer time isn't enough for Capac. Yep. That seems right, Wasted. That seems very right. <laughs> I assumed because you were here that there was something going on. I couldn't work out what was happening. What is happening? <laughs> Alright. I'll be right back, everyone. I think. See ya.